SPPD should be presented by Dr. Jian Wei Wang, but uh, he's now in Sweden. He will be, he will be available uh, in the midnight of today. And uh, um, here we want to share with you the research progress in biomarkers for effective not change, but classifier for viral and bacterial infections. Um, why should we look for biomarkers? The question seems very uh, easier to be answered because we need. Just as uh, uh, recently WHO have, have, have announced in the website the ten, there are 10 stress in 2019. Six of them uh, belong to infectious disease. So infectious disease are also still, no, no, not still, always the major threat to global health. But the etiological diagnosis, especially in some results like area, it's like, which influence the patient management and also causing the antibiotics or music. Um, in clinic, most infections are characterized with a fever with or without uh, symptoms. And the clinicians are always feel perplexed by the complicated infection in case manner. Um, Initially, as a primary health care, maybe it should be very infection, but the progress, uh, but uh, for, for the case, it may be uh, progress very rapidly. Maybe only one day they will co-infected by bacteria, so it's very complex. And uh, even by the same strain of influenza, some people seem subclinical infection, but some patients died. Just before I come here, we have received more than 10 patients suffered very severe, severe influenza infections, and half of them uh, died. Um, during the infections, the pathogens, we know they are influenza, but they have different clinical comes. So we should consider also the host factors. We want to find some biomarkers to distinguish the severe, non-severe inflammation, uh, infectious inflammation, and non-infectious inflammation, and viral or bacterial infections. It's difficult. Mm, there's some, um, it's an it's a example. Even we have paid much effort on the funding of biomarkers, but now in hospital, the golden standard for bacterial de detection was still culture. And uh, for ASR, CRP, and the PCT, uh, very good biomarkers and used uh, very often in clinic to help the clinician to decide to give the diagnosis. But uh, mm, we all know the specificity, maybe it's okay, but the uh, sensitivity may be not very good. Just according to the literature analysis, now the biomarkers can be divided into uh, four parts, the express host genes, the proteins, cell factors, and the cell receptors. Normally, we know uh, much, on the, much more on the protein markers. When the infectious agents uh, infect the host, the pumps or dams can accept the signaling and transduct to the immune cells, we can find some plasma cytokine concentrations increase or decrease. Uh, some of the cytokines can increase both in bacterial or viral infections, but some not. Another is acute phase proteins. The famous one, the CRP, PCT, SA, as uh, reported uh, before by uh, by the professors, and the ferritin, and etc. These acute phase uh, proteins are considered as good biomarkers. Um, so uh, I will begin from the CRP, and I noticed that several very wonderful published paper have considered the the, the effective of CRP um, has a high sens uh, sensitivity but moderate specificity in identification of bacterial infections. This one has been published by Dr. Yu's group. Uh, 
it was performed in Thailand and Miami. It can, it used uh, uh, record the, the patients more than one year old and use a cutoff of 40 micrograms per liter. And they can, uh, so I just um, uh, reuse the data to give the figure. You see if uh, by using CRP in the two different cohorts, it's a very, uh, two diff independent studies. It can decrease the uh, antibiotic prescription. Pre so it seems very useful. But how to improve, improve the CRP's effect? Normally, we can combine by multiple protein markers. It's all, uh, published on Lancet ID in 2016 by using three proteins, CRP, TRIO, and IP10. From the data, uh, it's the first double-blinded prospective validation study by using 577 uh, preschool children, using the use children. And compared with the single PCT and the CRP, the combination used of the three proteins can increase the classifier to 6.3% percent and 8.6. It's very important to classify it. So just three uh, component proteins have been uh, child in our hospitals. And the groups have uh, published two independent research by using more than 500 acute infection patients. And the age is uh, between three months to 18 years. And another, uh, in another research, they use more than 100 lower respect trans infections pediatric and adult patients. It seems the improved effect is very good. By using the three proteins, the sensitivity and the specificity is better than CRP and the PCT. It's a protein uh, markers. There are also some new markers can improve CRP capacity to predict inflammation as plasma circulating uh, galactin-3. So it seems the specificity is uh, 95%. They use uh, different cohorts. The non-infectious inflammatory disorders, including three kinds of, uh, the patients suffer the three kinds of <coughs> disease and the infections patients. Totally, the number of patients are 127. Uh, despite of CRP, the acute phase proteins, some proteins, um, antiviral proteins, seem also can use as potential marker. One we have noticed uh, in the previous slide called Max A. It's a promising marker of viral infections. There are three uh, papers I will uh, refer of this protein. In the symptomatic patients suffer with influenza, RSV, coronavirus, metanumavirus, and the uh, Buka virus, the concentration of MAX-A protein increase. And by using the acute uh, pharyngitis children in this cohort, this protein can distinguish the virus infection uh, compared to the bacterial infections, even in patients suffered the bacteria and the viral co-infection. So it's a very good, seems a prom uh, promising marker. And uh, in our uh, plasma, there are also some uh, minor inflammatory uh, cytokines after infected by the virus or bacteria. But it, uh, this uh, review published in Plus Pathogen, they think about maybe the uh, interleukin 1 bait 6 and the CRP can distinguish the, the bacterial infection, and the interferon C, uh, 18 and the ferritin can distinguish the viral infection. But it seems um, it's, uh, the effect is, is not good. 
So we just uh, give a conclusion. The inflammatory plasma markers just uh, can be used as an integral part uh, as a To, co uh, to be used together with the CRP, not used uh, by, the, by themselves. And also there are some cell factors. Things can be used uh, as uh, biomarkers, but from the published paper, I cannot find uh, a very uh, good effect. It help you have to be used together with the white blood cell counts and also CRP level. Not all of the and also the, some membrane bound complement regulators, the CD factor uh, should increase the levels in the, in the neutrophils and the monocytes. Uh, in viral infection, during viral infection, the CD46 increased. And during bacterial infections, uh, in the two cells, the C, uh, these two kinds of uh, CD factors increase. So I think people think maybe uh, by calculating the neutrophils and the monocytes, uh, the CD factor maybe can give us some clues for to distinguish the viral infection or bacterial infection. But the combination of the factors do not always improve the classification effects. Um, from Dr. Kevin's report, we noticed this factor can, it's a very good uh, trait age for malaria patients, uh, the, the, the proteins, but uh, in lower risk by chunked infections, patients, it seems that even combined, combined together with CRP, it show, showed no very good improved effects. Uh, despite all, uh, the second, promising biomarkers uh, is host RNA signatures. There are two published papers uh, by the same group. They performed a time-matched multi-cohort analysis. Firstly, they recruited the patients with acute illness, and then just uh, collect the samples from PBMC, from Buffy coat, from whole blood, and they identified there are 11 host genes uh, overexpressed or underexpressed in sepsis. They think the 11 host genes expression level can distinguish the patients uh, with infectious inflammation or stereo inflammation. And then later, they, by using another cohort, viral infection or bacterial infection, they identified seven host genes expression level can distinguish the two, co uh, the two different in uh, infections. But you see, the 11 and the seven host genes, there were no overlap. And I have uh, uh, highlight this gene it was uh, confirmed by another group. It can divide the influenza infect patients from bacterial infection. So whole, uh, if we, in our project, we include the host RNA signature, we should consider about the, the data may never be overlapped if you use different cohorts. And uh, in other three reports, by using uh, low uh, IRTI patients, they find several host genes increased uh, in viral infection cases, and then gave the very good data here. And the genes were narrowed down by using fibril children. They are very famous from 89A, and the two host genes can distinguish the bacteria and uh, infection from viral infections. In the validation cohort, the specificity is 96.4%. From our side, we think it's a very, very good effect. The two host genes. And as I have uh, 
said uh, in bef the last slide, this gene can uh, distinguish uh, uh, influenza infection patients from bacterial infection patients. They saw only one gene. We noticed that there were overlap in different uh, static group. And some, some cell receptors also considered as uh, uh, potential markers. Uh, in sepsis patients, it seems in memory B cells, the PD-1, and in CD4 uh, T cells, the PD-1 express very high, but they have a normal soluble PD-1 and PDR1. So these uh, signals maybe can be used to help reset sepsis. Normally, almost, um, normally most of the studies uh, use the cohorts from uh, LRTI, from uh, sepsis, but consider the central nervous system infections, the biomarker seems different. There are uh, two published paper, I think, I want to share with you some biogenic uh, amylase and the low CSF lactate against serum ESR and serum CRP can help to rule out the bacterial uh, infections. So, yeah, so in, in the future, if in our project we involved such kind of patients, maybe we have changed our methods to find uh, good biomarkers. Uh, how to apply it to the clinic? The protein markers seem seems as rapid and economical, but for RNA markers, we have to consider about the stability. And for viral detection or viral infection, even by using the real-time PCR or NGS or something like that, normally we detect the, we detect the virus, maybe not the infected agents. So we should consider about that. Uh, the limitation of the existing markers, we concluded there are some more than uh, the specificity. We have to consider about co-infections, and the, the, uh, in specific regions there are many malaria patients. But if, for example, in China, we have sev uh, we almost uh, all of the patients are input. We have no local patients, and specific infections. For example, the central nervous system infection. We also consider about the age, the sex, just reported in, in previous uh, the, the topic. And the perspective of the biomarkers, we think we have to combination, but not single markers will be used in the clinic. For only, we use only uh, signature or protein. From our side, we think protein is a better now. And uh, the sample size, uh, the study method, which kind of cohorts we used, uh, multi cohorts, double blinded, and multi center research should be considered. For our, in this meeting, maybe we consider we should take, uh, okay, take advantage of current network because we have our Gabriel uh, network and uh, we decided a specific objective. Maybe at first we narrow down the syndrome, but do not do everything. And the fourth uh, question is that we focus on public health or personal medicine. It's a problem, we can discuss later. And the subject, recruitment. It's acute fever with or without symptoms. It's a problem. Uh, there are several subject topics we can discuss later in our roundtable discussion section. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention.